It is Friday. You made it to the end of the week. We have done pretty well with the new stuff we've been doing, even though it's not really new because we've seen it in Fantastic Five past couple of weeks. Uh, on Wednesday, we just kind of dove into how to find area and perimeter and what they represent. Yesterday, we looked at some perimeter word problems, and today you're going to do the same, except we're going to be looking at area word problems. So the thing just to remember with area, we're measuring the inside. We're always going to be measuring in square units, and you find the area by doing length times width. So you're going to do five questions on your own after this. They may be similar to what you see in this video. Um, there are basic word problems with area, and then there's some that are a little bit harder where there's going to have to be keywords that you rely on to help you figure out what you need to do. So I'll let you know when I want you to pause and solve. Um, but for most of this, I think I got five or six questions. I'd like you just to watch, kind of take it in. So when you do them on your own, you'll be ready to go. So when I say there's basic questions, this would be one of them. Uh, it says I've got a bedroom, it measures 10 feet by 8 feet, and it just straight up tells me what is the total area of the question. So it gives me a length and a width, tells me what it's looking for, I just got to do it. Now, kind of like yesterday, if I got a word problem with area and perimeter, and I don't have a picture, the first thing I need to do is draw it. Boom, boom. All right, and anytime I see area, I'm going to circle it, and I'm going to write somewhere area equals length times width. That way I know what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to label the sides. It says it's 10 feet by 8 feet. So 10 feet long, 8 feet wide. And if I want to find the area, length times width, 10 times 8 would give me an area of 80. Now, if you just put 80, that's incorrect. You've got to put 80 square feet. Anytime we're dealing with area, we're multiplying and putting our answer in square units. So that's an example of a question where if you saw it on an EOG Friday or a Fan 5 or just an assignment, I wouldn't be too concerned with that one. I think you'd be fine. Even these that get a little bit more complicated, I'm not as worried about because you've seen similar questions in Fantastic Five. That's why I like it so much. Uh, so I'll read this one to you, and you'll have one similar to this. It says, the Johnstons built a new playroom. The room is square and measures nine feet on one side. How much carpeting should Miss Johnston order to cover the floor of the playroom? Now, they may not jump out at you right now, but there are a ton of keywords in that question that tell you, hey, I need to find the area. Before we get to that, first thing I got to do is draw a picture. If it tells me I have a square, I'm going to draw a square. Now, from our experience with FAM5, you should know squares got four equal sides. Boom, 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 boom. And if I know that one side measures nine feet, they're all going to measure nine feet. So it doesn't flat out come out and say, hey, find the area or find the perimeter. So here's the keywords you need to look for. Obviously, square was important. Look at carpeting. Think about the carpet you might have at your house or somebody else's house. Would you put a carpet around the outside of the room or would you fill the floor with carpet? You're going to fill the inside, right? The carpet's going to be going here. It's another word that's going to tell you to find area. When you see the word cover, I got to cover this entire floor with carpet. All of those signs point me to, hey, I need to find the area. And again, once I know I'm finding area, I'll put length times width. Something I'm noticing, people, when they get to a square, they're doing nine times four. Guys, that's going to give me the perimeter. Length times width is this number times this number, and that's going to give me 81 square feet. So you've seen similar things in FAN5 already. You may see something like that when you do some questions on your own. Uh, and this, <clears throat> excuse me, this one right here is exactly like what we did in FAN5, but just a step less. I think in FAN5 we're having to figure out the perimeter. This one says the area of the floor is 16 inches. The floor is square shaped. What is the measurement of one side? If it tells me I've got a square, I'm drawing a square. And y'all, I don't have to figure out the area. They gave it to me. My area is equal to 16. Now that should say square inches. Square inches. And I know that I got that area by doing length times width. I had a number here that I multiplied by a number right here to get 16. Now, since it's a square, I know all these sides are equal. 
So some people might say, hey, what's the measurement of one side? Well, I could do eight times two and get 16. I could do 16 times one and get 16. But if this is a square, my numbers have to be the same. So this just comes down to knowing your facts. What number times itself is gonna give you 16? For this one, if it's asking you, what's the measurement of one side? Four times four gives me 16. That answer would be four inches. So there's a ton of different varieties of word problems you can get when it comes to area. Uh, all you've already kind of seen before. This one again, very similar to that last one. Only one little tweak for this one, and I'll tell you in just a second. It says the area of the rug is 21 square inches and the width is three square inches. See, that should say three inches. Sorry about that. And the width is three inches. What is the length of the rug? Now, here's the deal. On the last three questions, it said my square this, my square that, my square this. If it doesn't give you a shape, it's going to be a rectangle. So here's my rug. Unless it says my square rug, if it doesn't say any shape, you got a rectangle. So I know the area of this rectangle, 21 square inches. I got that by doing length times width. And it gave me the width of three inches. I'm trying to figure out the length. So if I got to do length times width to get my area, 21, I got to do something times three to get it. The only thing different with this one and the last one, a rectangle does not have to have equal sides. I've just got to know my facts. Three times something gives me 21, and whatever that number is, is going to be my length. In this case, if you know your facts, your length would be 7 inches. So something to remember, if it doesn't give you the shape, it's going to be a rectangle. Rectangle obviously doesn't have four equal sides, but a square does. So a lot of things to remember when you're looking at these questions. All right, it's about time to get you one to do on your own. So this is what I want to read it. I want you to solve it. Sorry, I'm watching something. I want you to solve it, press play, come back, see if it matches. It says a piece of paper is eight inches wide. If the area of the paper is 72 square inches, what is the width? So again, this is one of those pictures where you got to draw a picture. Or one of these questions where you got to draw a picture doesn't tell you what it is so we're automatically going to put a rectangle it told me the area is 72 square inches all right it also told me the width is eight inches so i'm trying to figure or it told me the length whichever one is trying to say i'm trying to figure out my other side i'm trying to figure out the length well, if my area is equal to length times width, that means I did this number multiplied times eight to get 72. You've got to know your facts. If you know your facts, eight times nine would have given you an area of 72 square inches. That answer would have been nine inches. All right, so similar to that last one, if you paid attention to that last one, that was no problem. All right, here is where Fantastic Five is really going to come in handy because we've been struggling on this one in class. Virtually, it might be a little bit easier for you. Uh, you may have some more resources to use. Uh, but this says a gym is 18 feet long and 18, four, sorry, 14 feet wide. What is the total area of the gym? So I've got to draw a shape. Don't tell me what it is, but I do have two different lengths and widths. So I've got a rectangle. I know it's 18 feet long, 14 feet wide. I need to find the area. And I know I'll do that by doing length times width. None of y'all know 18 times 14 off the top of your head. You shouldn't. Now, I told you this on Wednesday. Might have said it yesterday. This is calculator active. You could very easily plug 18 times 14 in your calculator and get that answer. But that's what normal fourth graders are doing. We've got this question just like this in FAM 5 for this reason. Yes, you can use your calculator to check. And yes, if you struggle, you can use it. Because we should be able to take that 18, stack it on top of that 14, and multiply. You start in the ones place. 4 times 8, 32. 2 stays, 3 goes. All right, go across here. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. That gives me 72. So I've multiplied by the ones place. I'm gonna scratch it out, scratch that number out that I carried over. I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna start a new line. 
But before I do anything, I'm going to add a zero, put my placeholder down. Because if I'm multiplying by the tens place, the first number I put needs to go in the tens place. All right, so looking at this one, I got one times eight, I put eight. One times one, I get one. Last thing I got to do is add those two numbers together. Zero plus two is two. Eight plus seven is 15. Carry the one. One plus one is two. So if I did this one, my area would be 252 square feet. If you use your calculator on that one, guys, it's fine. But I think we should be able to do that two digit by two digit. I think that's kind of what puts us ahead above the rest. We've seen that type of question before. So I don't want you to rely on it. But you've always got your calculator if you need to use it. All right. I only want to look at, I think, two more. And one of them you're going to do. Or you're going to do, yes, two of them. All right. You're going to do one. So this goes back to a question we had with perimeter word problems. Obviously, we're going to solve it a little bit differently. It says a rectangle has an area of 56 square meters. Which dimensions could belong to this rectangle? This is so easy if you know your facts. So it's giving me lengths and widths. So like if I look at A, it's saying it's nine long, four wide. You find area, guys, by doing length times width. So if I look at nine times four, would that match my area? That's not gonna work. That would be 36, I'm looking for 56. All right, so let's say I tried B. Seven long, six wide. Again, length times width. Seven times six gives me 42. That doesn't match my area. Get rid of those. Maybe. All right, looking at C. Eight long, seven wide. If I do length times width, eight times seven, that gives me 56 square meters. That matches what I'm looking for. I'm still going to check D because that's just what I do. And I put 12 long, six wide, 12 times six, length times width. That would give me 72 square meters little bit more than I am looking for, which proves that my answer would be C. So that's just like yesterday. You got to plug in those answers, do the equation for area, length times width, see which one matches. So I want you to give that one a shot here. It says a rectangle has an area of 18 square meters. Which of these dimensions could belong to this rectangle? I want you to pause it, solve it, press play, see what you got. So hopefully when you were solving this one, you drew your rectangle. It gave us the area of 18 square meters. And we know that we get it from doing length times width. Hopefully you tried every answer choice, you plugged them all in. But if you looked at B specifically, if it's six meters long, three meters wide, and I did length times width, six times three would give me that 18 square meters, which is B. So that should be fairly easy if you know your facts. The last one I'm going to show you is also similar to the perimeter word problems we looked at yesterday. Obviously, you're going to do one step a little bit different. This says Paul's bathroom is seven feet wide and twice as long as it is wide. What is the area of Paul's bathroom? Now, yesterday, I would expect people to say uh, seven here, twice means two, two here. But I think now you know what that twice is actually saying. It doesn't mean that it's two feet long. It means it's two times as long as it is wide. So, it, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If I know that it's seven feet wide, and I know it's two times as long as it is wide, I'm going to do two times seven. And that's going to tell me that really, it's 14 feet long. Now notice, 14 is an answer choice. Some people may pick that. But guys, that represents the length. I need to know the area of that bathroom, and I do that from length times width. 14 times 7. Again, yes, you have your calculator, but y'all, we can do this. Boom. 7 times 4 gives me 28. 8 stays, 2 goes. Going across, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. Now, when you see that 2 right there, that just means squared. That will be 98 squared feet, which is D. So, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. 
this video is going on. I understand this video is a little bit long, probably not how you want to spend your Friday. But guys, it doesn't take as long as it would if you were sitting in my classroom right now. If you took the time to watch this entire video, first of all, do not tell your classmates. If you watch this video and you email me a smiley face emoji, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. 500 tickets. What? 500 ticket voucher. Do not tell a soul. I'm going to know exactly who watched this video. 500 tickets. Go do those five questions on your own. Read them carefully. 